In the last episode, we heard from the publisher of The Lacerta File. In this episode, the opening will be heard from Old.K to talk about his emotional journey while organizing this record. Then, the conversation between Old.K and Lacerta will begin. It will be conducted in a Q&A format. I certify that the following text is the absolute truth and no work of fiction. These are parts of a transcript of an interview IV made with a non-human and reptilian being in December 1999. This female being was already in contact with a friend of mine, whose name is given only with the abbreviation EF in the text, for some months. Let me declare that I was all my life a skeptic about UFOs, aliens, and other weird things and I thought that EF tells me just dreams or fictional stories when he talked with me about his first contacts with the non-human being Lacerda. I was still a skeptic when I met this being on December 16th last year in that small warm room in the remote house of my friend near a town in the south of Sweden, despite the fact that I saw now with my own eyes that she was not human. She has told and shown me so many unbelievable things during that meeting that I can't deny the reality and the truth of her words any longer. This is not another of those wrong UFO papers which claim to tell the truth but tell in fact just fiction, I'm convinced that this transcript contains the only truth and therefore you should read it. I had talked with her for over three hours, so the following transcript shows you only shortened parts of the interview because she asked me after the interview not to publish everything she had told me already. The order of the questions in this transcript is not always the same order in which I had asked them, so it may seem sometimes a little bit confusing to you. It was not easy to delete all the important parts she had asked me to delete from the transcript, so I apologize for the maybe unusual order. I am in possession of the entire transcript of the interview. 49 pages with some of my drawings of her body and her equipment, and also some tapes on which I have the full interview, but I will not reveal this before I have permission from her. I certify furthermore, that various paranormal abilities of her species like telepathy and telekinesis, including the moving and dancing of my pencil on the table without touching, and the flying of an apple around 40 centimeters over her hands, were shown to me during the three hours and six minutes of the meeting and I'm absolutely sure that these abilities were no tricks. The following is certainly difficult to understand and to believe for someone who hasn't experienced it, but I was really in contact with her mind and I am now completely sure that everything she said during the interview is the absolute truth about our world. Unfortunately, if I read the entire transcript and much more, this very shortened form by myself I have the strong impression that everything I've written sounds too unbelievable to be true, that everything sounds more like a bad science fiction story from TV or cinema and I have doubts that anyone will believe my experiences. But they are true, if you believe it or not. I can t expect from you that you believe my simple words without evidence, but I can't give you that evidence. Please read the transcript and think about it and you will maybe see the truth in these words. There will be a new meeting between me and her, again in the same house in Sweden, on April 23, 2000 and she promised to give me maybe some evidence for her existence. In the meantime, I collect questions which I will ask her then. Maybe she gives me permission to reveal more of the missing parts in that transcript and about the coming war. Believe it or not, this makes no real difference, but I hope you will believe. Old.K's narrative takes place on January 8, 2000. The time will now be pushed back to December 16, 1999, when the conversation between Old.K and Lacerda begins. First of all, who are you and what are you? Are you an extraterrestrial species or can your origin be found on this planet? As you could see with your own eyes, I am not a human being like you, and to be honest, I am no real mammal, despite my partly mammal-like body features, which are a result of evolution. I'm a female reptile being, belonging to a very old reptilian race. 
We are the native Terrans, and we live on that planet since millions of years. We are mentioned in your religious writings like your Christian Bible, and many of the ancient human tribes were aware of our presence and worshipped us as gods, for example the Egyptians and the Inca and many other old tribes. Your Christian religion has misunderstood our role in your creation, so we are mentioned as evil serpent in your writings. This is wrong. Your race was genetically engineered by aliens, and we were just the more or less passive visitors of this accelerated evolution process. You must know, some of your scientists have already guessed this, that your species had evolved at a naturally completely impossible speed within just two, three millions of years. This is absolutely impossible, because evolution is a much slower process if it is natural, but you have not understood this. Your creation was artificial and done by genetic engineering, but not by us, but by an alien species. If you ask me if I am an extraterrestrial, I must answer now. We are native Terrans. We had and have some colonies in the solar system, but we originate on this planet. It's in fact our planet and not yours, it was never yours. Can you tell me your name? This is difficult because your human tongue is not able to pronounce it correctly, and a mispronunciation of our names is very offensive for some of my kind. Our language is very different from yours, but my name is, I will try to make it smoother by using your human letters, something like a word with a very, very strong pronunciation of this and K sounds. We have no four names like you, but only a single but unique name, which is divided and characterized by the way of speaking, and which is given not to children, who have a known children name, but only in a special procedure in the adolescent age at the time of either religious or scientific enlightenment or awareness, as you would call it. I would appreciate it if you don't try to say my real name with your human tongue. Please call me La Cerda. This is the name I generally use when I am among humans and talk with them. How old are you? We measure the time not like you do in astronomical years and in the revolve of the Earth around the Sun because we usually live beneath the surface of the planet. Our time measurement depends on periodically returning cycles in the Earth's magnetic field and according to this, and said with your numbers, I am today, let me calculate, 57,653 cycles old. I have reached my adult phase and my awareness 16,337 cycles ago. This is a very important date for us. According to your human time scale, I am around 28 years old. What is your task? Do you have a job like us? To say it with your words, I am a curious student of the social behavior of your species. That's why I'm here and talk to you. That's why I have revealed my real nature to EF and now to you, and that's why I give you all that secret information and why I will try to answer all the questions on your many sheets of paper honestly. I will see how you react, how others of your kind react. There are so many crazies and liars of your kind on this planet who claim to know the truth about us, about UFOs, about aliens and so on, and some of you believe their lies. I'm interested to see how your species will react if you make the truth public. I'm quite sure all of you will refuse to believe my words, but I hope I'm wrong, because you need to understand if you want to survive the coming years. I V read your full statement, which you have given to EF, about this, but can you give me now just a short answer? Are UFOs real flying objects piloted by extraterrestrials or do they belong to your species? Some observed UFOs, as you call them, belong to us, but most not. Most of the mysterious flying objects in the sky are not technological devices, but mainly misinterpretations of natural phenomena your scientists have not understood, like spontaneous plasma flares in the high atmosphere. Nevertheless, some UFOs are real craft belonging either to your own species, especially to your military or to other alien species, or at last to us, but a minority of sighted craft belongs really to us, because we are generally very careful with our movements in the atmosphere, and we have special ways to hide our ships. 
If you read a report about a sighting of a metalish, bright gray cigar-shaped cylindrical object with a length of there are different types, let me say between 20 and 260 of your meters. And if this object had made a very deep humming sound, and if there were five bright red lights on the metalish surface of the cigar, one at the top, one in the middle, two at the end, then it is likely that some one of you have seen one of our ships. And this means that it was either partly defect or that some one of us was not careful enough. We also have a very small fleet of disc-shaped craft, but such UFOs belong usually to an alien species. Triangular UFOs belong generally to your own military, but they use foreign technology to build them. If you really want to try to see one of our craft, you should have a look at the skies over the Arctic, the Antarctic, and over Inner Asia, especially over the mountains there. Do you have a special symbol or something like that with which we can identify your kind? We have two major symbols representing our species. One, the more ancient symbol is a blue serpent with four white wings on a black background. The colors have religious meanings for us. This symbol was used from certain parts of my society, but it is today very seldom you humans have copied it very often in your old writings. The other symbol is a mystic being you would call a dragon in the shape of a circle with seven white stars in the middle. This symbol is much more common today. If you see one of those symbols on a cylindrical craft I've described in my previous answer or on some underground installation, this thing or place definitely belongs to us, and I would advise you to go away from there as soon as possible. The seven stars in the second symbol UVE mentioned, do they mean the Pleiades? Pleiades. No. Actually, the seven stars are planets and moons, and they are a symbol for our former seven colonies in the solar system. The stars are shown in front of a blue background, and the dragon circle means the shape of Earth. The seven white stars mean Moon, Mars, Venus, and four moons of Jupiter and Saturn we had colonized in the past. Two colonies are no longer in use and abandoned, so five stars would be more correct. Pause here, let me talk about the above content of this file, and my opinion so far. At the beginning of this episode, the interviewee of The Lacerta File, also known as Witness Ol.K, briefly outlines his belief in the authenticity of the file. He describes how he went from being a skeptic of extraterrestrial beings and UFOs to being unwavering in his conviction about his experience, which contrasts with the perspective of the publisher in the first episode. From a psychological standpoint, does this make the reader more curious to continue reading and see how the rest of the events unfold? Old.K also mentions that the file is like a bad science fiction story and is difficult to believe. It seems like an attempt to win the reader's sympathy by confessing to a crime and suggesting that the document contains undeniable reasons and first-hand accounts of the truth, in order to lure the reader into continuing to read. Alternatively, the writer is trying to appeal to the reader's feelings and suggest that the reader should be on the same side as Old.K. Additionally, the final few sentences of Old.K's account leave a cliffhanger with the mention of a war coming. So far, I have seen several psychological techniques that I believe are meant to keep the reader engaged and wanting to continue reading. If this is viewed as a form of marketing or a movie trailer, I think it has been successful so far. After Old Doc K's introduction, the substantive interview begins. The first question addresses a topic that many people, including scientists, want to know the answer to, the origin of humankind. Most people are familiar with Darwin's theory of evolution, which posits that humans evolved from apes. This explanation is challenged here. In archaeology, there is a stage that has been verified by fossils known as the Cambrian Explosion, which in short, refers to a relatively brief period of time in which a large number of new species suddenly emerged on Earth, seemingly contradicting the idea of evolution. If evolution is not the correct explanation, the idea that humans are the product of advanced genetic engineering by a more advanced civilization is a more plausible one, but it could potentially offend human pride in being the most intelligent species on Earth. Do you believe this explanation? Additionally, from Lacerda's description of their race, it can be inferred that they are a technologically advanced, long-lived race with colonies in other parts of the solar system or that they are the original inhabitants of Earth. Does this shake human confidence in their own superiority? The other section on UFO explanations was a topic I was originally more interested in, but unfortunately it only provided simple classification without any high-quality information. This concludes this episode.
If you enjoyed this video, please share, subscribe, and turn on notifications for the next exciting journey in our next episode.